What market should you invest in? This is the number one question I get from real estate investors, both newbie and experienced. Where you invest could make or break your investment deal. When I first got into real estate, I found that there were limited tools available to analyze markets. I was frustrated and wanted to see if I could use data to help me to narrow down markets. A data-driven approach to real estate has helped me save time and have more confidence in the markets I invest in. In this video, I'll show you how to take a data-driven approach to find top markets using a market explorer tool for free. My name is Aria Herrera, your fellow data scientist with the Tech and Real Estate channel, where we bridge the gap between real estate and technology. If this is the type of content you want to see more of, then please like this video and don't forget to subscribe. All right, let's get started. In this video, I'm going to show you two things. One, how to use this app to find a market to invest in, and second, how this app was built so you can feel confident behind the numbers. First, to get started, it's important to understand where we are in the process of how to achieve financial freedom through real estate. I've detailed this in a prior video of the 10 steps, and where selecting a market sits is step number four. Now, selecting a market could be the most critical part of your investment journey since it determines what type of property and where you are investing. Think of selecting a market like a funnel. Across the United States, there are 380 plus metro areas like New York, Philadelphia, San Francisco, the Tampa Bay area. There's a lot of different metro areas that you could be investing in. So if we're looking at all these different areas, if we're open to going outside of our local market, how do we actually analyze these? Where this is where taking a data-driven approach, like looking at macroeconomic stats, like unemployment rates, microeconomic stats, maybe looking at median household income for a particular area, as well as market data stats, like days on market, price to rent ratios, becomes really, really important to start to hone down these 380 plus metro areas to a select few. And then once you have a select few, this is where it's really important to have boots on the ground, start talking to agents, property managers, going into Facebook groups, and maybe even flying to these different areas to understand where you would want to invest, whether that be within the metro area in the city itself, or maybe in the suburban town surrounding it. Now this begs the question, where do you get this data to start analyzing different markets? This is one of the most challenging parts when it comes to bridging the gap between real estate and technology. But luckily, a lot of this data is actually free and readily available to use. So for example, economic stats come from many different government sources, including the U.S. Bureau of Labor of Statistics, also known as BLS. They have information like unemployment rate, jobs, and more. You could also look at FRED that has information consolidated across these government groups and some other sources that has information like median household income down to a county level. Now, one of my most favorites are some of the listing sites that have information on market housing data. Redfin, Realtor, and Zillow all publish this on a monthly basis. There's information like home values, forecasts, rent data for sale, and more. Now, I've been detailing how to go through each of these websites within the last several years within my videos. I also have a course that helps you to consolidate all this information and ultimately create a Tableau dashboard from the national level all the way down to the zip code level. For the purpose of the Market Explorer tool, I wanted to consolidate this information and put it into one single tool that could be used by someone who's looking to quickly analyze and maybe not dive into the whole portion of Python developing. So what is this Market Explorer app? This Market Explorer app is a friendly tool to help you analyze rising and declining markets for real estate investing. The app retrieves data from multiple data sources to review different attributes of a region like long-term growth, profitability, and affordability. So let's walk through an example here. On the left-hand side, we have metrics. These are metrics that can help you to narrow down on different regions. And this is subjective to what you believe is most important or the strategy that you're going for. So for example, say if you're looking for appreciating markets, you're looking to see maybe where more people are migrating towards, thus home prices are increasing, 
or maybe a low supply is driving appreciation as well. So if on the left-hand side, we select appreciation, we will now see for all of the metro areas ranked by appreciation year on year. So what median list price was last year in comparison to what it is this year. So from what we could see, and this data is updated every single month, Santa Barbara had the highest median list price appreciation gain, so 40% year on year in comparison to other metro areas. And we could see here the top 10. We could also select one of the other top 10 to get more information on them, which I'll detail in a moment. But what this initially, this view gets me is, okay, Santa Barbara has been the highest for appreciation. If that's my strategy, then maybe I want to invest there. But I cannot afford a house that's $1.8 million yet. So with that, maybe I want to focus in on a particular region. So I've been hearing a lot in the Facebook groups and from successful investors that investing in the Midwest has been profitable in the long run. So I select Midwest. Now I could see my rankings change. Now Bloomington, Indiana is number one for appreciation. We see here that it's increased year over year, 22%. We could also use this table to look at more information like median square feet, rent, median household income, total population, and some more. But this is good, right? Like now we can start to take all this information from metro areas across different data sources, start to rank them. But ideally, we're not just looking at one single metric, right? Maybe I care about appreciation, but I also want to see an area that's growing. How do I start to combine these different metrics together? This is the power of using a tool like this. Imagine that the things that I care about are two things household income to rent ratio, and market hotness. Market hotness is a score that comes directly from Realtor. Household income to rent ratio, what does that mean? Basically affordability. So if someone has an income of $50,000 and they're spending $10,000 of rent per year, then they are spending 20% of their income on rent, which usually if it's above 30%, that's pretty high and unaffordable for most. I like to invest in markets that are more affordable because I know I could likely push up rents in the future. One metric is going to have a little bit more influence in my overall formula versus the other. And we could see that reflect on the right-hand side. Now our rankings have changed a little bit for the Midwest, but what if I want to look across all regions once again? So I'm going to select all here. Lynchburg, Virginia has actually been the area that meets my criteria the most. The hotness score, 75.83, which is pretty hot. And when it comes to household income to rent ratio, it's a pretty good ratio for the median household income, $64,000 a year, and for rent, about $911 per month. So this area is definitely affordable and likely has the ability to increase rents in the future, assuming that supply remains the same. On the right hand side for total population it's slightly grown year on year which is a good sign my next steps here would probably be understanding the employers in this area maybe talking to an agent let's still go a little bit deeper into the data analysis i'm going to filter down now on southern regions and maybe lynchburg is a little bit too small of a market for me so i'm going to look at ones that are actually above 500k this is changing my rankings on the right hand side. And I want to look at markets that I can actually afford. Let's look for those that are under 250K or under 500K. And now I could see my rankings have changed. Based on my formula that I set before, Greensboro, High Point, North Carolina is deemed to be the best metro area. Household income to rent ratio isn't that outstanding. It worries me a bit that. The rent is maybe already too high in this area, but the hotness score is pretty high there. So maybe I want to change things up a bit and say, instead of hotness really driving my score, I want to look at price to rent ratio. And I'm going to put this as 30 here. We could see that now my formula has shifted what metro areas comes to the top, Columbia, South Carolina which I know nothing about. So if I want to dive deeper into this area, I could go into charts and actually look at these housing market stats. 
and I have each of them sourced. Again, these are publicly available for free, this data, and I'm just serving it up in a way that's easy to consume. So here we could see that median list price for this area has increased. And if we could kind of go back in time to look at a little bit longer of a view, um, this is pretty typical across different areas, metro areas and cities, that you'll see median list price has jumped since 20. We could see days on market being cyclical or seasonal and makes sense that during the summer months, it's lower versus the higher months. Um, some things that would be interesting is looking at supply, so looking at new listings. As well, Realtor provides a supply score and a demand score. So the idea with using all of this information is that you can start to pinpoint what areas you may want to invest in. Now, using a data-driven approach isn't a one solution fits all. It may get you 70% of the way, which is amazing, but you really should be talking to individuals and going to explore these areas in deeper views to analyze if you want to invest there. After choosing a market, the second biggest question I always get is, okay, well, what neighborhood should I be investing in? And this is one of the primary reasons why we created coffee closers so that you could have those maps to understand neighborhoods down to track levels to really understand what neighborhoods are in their gentrification process as well. For the techies that want to know how I built this app and what are the future plans for it? Well, the way I like to build is an MVP framework, minimum viable product. The way you build something very quickly that can stand up and you start to measure how people are using it. So for example, I developed the data preparation for about nine hours, took three hours to put it into the app, so 12 hours in total. And now my next steps are understanding how people are using the app and what should I build upon it. So when I start to rebuild again, so continuously iterating is what helps to build really cool apps. And if you have feedback on this app, things you want to see, for example, comparing different markets, searching any market, going down to the zip code level, these are all things I'd be more than happy to build if there's enough interest and I receive that type of feedback. And if you want to build really cool tools similar to this, then I, encourage you to join a tech and real estate hackathon coming in April. Whether you are a techie or not, we are pairing people in groups based on what the kind of problems that you want to solve, which is going to be a really fun event. I'll be a coach alongside some other experienced techies to help you build these products from the ground up. Thanks for watching.